Okay, so there we're going to look at a beam with what's called the UBL. So UBL stands for uniformly close, 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 close. Distributed load. Yeah, we're not going to unifor universally, we're not going to spread it across the whole universe. It's just uniformly across this bit. So what it means is that for these three meters, there's 40 kilonewtons every meter. So across the total three meters, we're going to have 120 kilonewtons. And the way to work it is just to imagine that there's a point load in the middle. So this whole UBL we can replace with a single force of 120 kilonewtons acting one and a half meters yeah, halfway in, in the UBL. Yeah, okay. So, yes, 40 times three. So 40 newt kilonewtons per meter for three meters, 120. So if you've got a, a beam where the UBL is effectively the mass of the beam, so sometimes you'll see a question that talks about a beam of mass 500 kilograms per meter, that can be pretty heavy, but you work it out across the whole beam and just take it in the middle of the beam. But this UBL is only for that portion, so the force acts in the middle of that portion. And then it's exactly the same, once you've got that, it's exactly the same for finding the beam reactions A and B. So first thing you want to do is to define an origin. So let's put the origin at point A for a start. Set my origin there, draw my measurements from there, and I just use my normal uh, anti clockwise moments equal clockwise moments. So if my beam is fixed at point A and I'm trying to turn it anti clockwise, the only thing that's doing that is force B, which in this case is at 10 meters. So B at 10 meters equals whatever's pulling it clockwise. The point at clockwise is that force at that distance, so 20 times 2 plus the red one, which is the place of the UBL, so 120 times 3.5. Remembering you always take your measurements from the origin, so the 1.5 has to be added on to the 2. And the other one, which is going clockwise, is this 30 kilonewtons which is at seven meters. Yep, and then it's just a little bit about, do a little bit of uh, algebra. So B, what do you got? 40 plus 360 and 60 is 420 plus 210 over 10, which gives us 460, 670, so 67, I think. Kilonewtons, I think it's Sounds all right, so that's B. So B is 67 kilonewtons. And then we repeat process to find out A. So we just put our um, origin at the other end, the origin at this end, and we're going to work, um, basically look the other way. So anti-clockwise motion equals clockwise motion. Okay, so now we've pivoted here. Anti-clockwise is this way, so 30 at 3 metres, plus the UDL, which we call 120, at, at 3 and 2 is 5, and this 1 and a half is 6 and a half. So 120 times 6 and a half, plus this 20 kilonewtons at 8 metres, And that all equals whatever's going clockwise, which is that way. And the only thing that's pushing it that way is A at 10 metres, which is A times 10. Again, a little bit of algebra. So A is 90 plus 720, maybe 780 plus 160 divided by 10, which is, what do you got? 8, 9, 40, 10, 30. 103, I think. Okay, and let's just check whether I've managed to get that right or not, because we can check it using forces up equals forces down, just to 
gets on the right track, so it forces up, forces down, so up is A, called 103, B is 67, down is 20 plus 120 plus 30. Is that correct? Well, on this side we've got 170, and on this side 140, 170. Cool, actually got it right. Okay, so, uh, okay, so um, it's always nice to be able to check that in the exam if you're doing a question like this, to know that you've got the answer right is quite a nice idea. So basically, to deal with a UDL, all you need to do is right up front before you do anything else, replace it with the point load of the total force that's in the middle of the UDL. And then you can ignore the wiggly bit and just work with the point load. So it comes out exactly the same as the previous example and you've got the answer to work with. 